So welcome back everybody to this Carolina Panthers franchise and we head into the offseason as Super Bowl champions. In the last couple of off seasons, it's been nothing but disappointment losing their first game in the playoffs, going into the offseason looking for answers, looking how to improve this team so we can bring a Super Bowl to Carolina. But finally this offseason we have done it. We have won the Super Bowl and we can go into the offseason and uh, just really try to just clean up some things here. So right now, Well, Willie Henry, I think we're just going to let a lot of these guys go. Ian Thomas, maybe not for that contract. We'll see what he wants in free agency. Graham Gano, I might look at another kicker, even though he's obviously been amazing, but well, I think we'll, we'll continue to look at uh, kickers maybe for a little bit higher kick power. Griffin, I think we're going to let go as well. Dwayne Smoot, Noah Spence, all these guys I think we're just going to let pretty much walk. Um... I don't know, maybe Hodges. Maybe Hodges and Golden. That's not that bad of an offer as well. You know, it's only a two-year deal. That'll put him to 29 years old. I think that's fair. And he signs. Okay, he brings back. He's back. 
Golden, he played really well this year. Had uh, three interceptions. Uh, was playing in that big dime position. And I think we'll see if he can bring it back two years, five million. And he's back. So that's good. That gives us some depth. Um, back in the safety position, Tease Tabor. It's the one-year deal, around $2 million. I'd like to lower that and maybe offer him something. I think it's a little too much for him. Obviously, he hasn't really got any really playing time, but his, his attributes not the greatest. One year, $2 million. Let's see what he wants. And he will go to free agency. That's fine with me. And Dennis Daly, we're obviously not going to bring back him. We'll look towards the draft probably for linemen there. So that's the re-sign period. Not a whole lot of news there. So you can take a look at the roster. Uh, so definitely right guard. Depending what we can, if we can bring back Trey Turner, he'll obviously fill in there. If not, we might have to we might have to uh, move Vallejo into right guard to look for somebody in the draft. Defensively wise, I think we just got to really we obviously need a right end. We need to work on the ends. Maybe work on a trade. I'm thinking about moving Isaiah Simmons into the inside of middle linebacker with his athleticism and what he can do if you you know watch him at Clemson. Uh, he can do that. He plays all over the place, so possibly move him in there. And let's take a look at free agency. So Leighton Van Der Esch, Von Miller is sitting right there. Roquan Smith. Wow. So that's very interesting there. Because obviously if we can maybe make a deal for Shaq Thompson, you could sign Roquan Smith. But, uh, man, I don't know. That would be insane. Roquan Smith and uh, Luke Keekley. Yeah, that would be uh, a pretty crazy duo in the middle. You got Richard Sherman there. You got Damon Harrison. So there's some options here. I'm not really looking for um, maybe Harrison defensive tackle, but I don't know. You'd have to move him to end. Uh, I'm thinking maybe not with there. He's 33 years old. Don't really need, don't need running back. Trey Turner is probably going to be the top guy we're going to be looking at right now. But before we get to him, let's go to the receiver. We'll just continue to look for maybe some depth. Preston Williams is sitting there. I have to say, the receiver free agency is, there's so many guys here. It's just guys that are intriguing, and obviously Preston Williams is so intriguing with his size, speed, agility, and obviously he tore us apart last year. He had a heck of a game against us. I think he had like 150, 160 yards receiving. So I think sign a deal with Preston Williams. It's not too bad. Two years, it's about $6 million. I could definitely get him in playing time. Looking at tight ends, man, Mark Andrews is sitting there, Will Disley. Um... Ian Thomas, maybe just bring him back. Hayden Hurst. Man, all the Ravens tight ends. Jeez, Jake, uh, um, Nick Boyle sitting there. Jake Butt is there. So there's definitely some decent tight ends here. So maybe, you know, you're thinking maybe Mark Andrews. But maybe we'll just sign Ian Thomas to a one-year deal. And we'll go from there. I mean, Ian Thomas, is he's not too bad. He's okay. He's, you know, serviceable tight end. Um, he can shine sometimes, but then sometimes really disappear. So looking at that, Trey Turner's obviously got some deals on him. Kyle Long's another guy. Not the greatest pass block at 75. Run block a little lower than I would have wanted to. So here's Trey Turner. Obviously tried to sign him. He did not resign. He's been pretty good. Let's see if he can bring him back. Vikings have a offer out for him, 96 points. So we'll see what this is. Obviously he wanted, this is almost just about the same deal that we're going to give him. Um, so let's see where this, where this puts us at 94 points. So we'll have to up that a little bit more, maybe give them more bonus. Uh, obviously, they like the salary bonus for sure. Just up both of them. Go up to around $33.2 million. That's going to put us at 97 points. It's risking it, but I think we'll go there. Uh, so, uh, we'll go to right end here, taking a look to see what's around. See, that's more like it. I, I would go after Solomon Thomas here. He's going to give you pretty much probably the same type of production Larry Ogunjobi has, but look at the price tag that Solomon Thomas is going to bring us. I mean, he it's absolutely nothing. So I'm thinking that may be where we go, looking around everybody else here. Sam Hubbard, maybe. I mean, he's not too bad. Star development, 75 overall. He's 27 years old. Not going to have the kind of agility. Um, so maybe just go right back up. Let's go to Solomon Thomas. I mean, he has offers out, but, I mean, look at Ogan Joby. He's making, he wants like about $17 million um, over the life of the contract, two to three years. Blind Nichols, I'm not really intrigued by. Yeah, I'm a $16 million. So we've got one year deal here for Solomon Thomas. Almost just $2 million. Maybe we up it a little bit to around, you know, near $3 million. Yeah, 2.75. And that's going to take us well over everybody else. So just the, the, the price tag alone is well worth it. 
Now, corner and back depth, obviously, we're going to need some backup corners. That is for sure. Right now, the only ones on the roster are Dante Jackson and Fuller. So, we got it. We got to get some cornerback depth, but not really. I mean, there's guys here that can fill in, but you're, you know, somebody you're going to have to play in the nickel with this day and age in the NFL. You need somebody that's going to be on the field a lot of time, and that's almost like a base defense nowadays is a nickel defense. So I'm not really seeing a whole lot there. Obviously, T's Tabor who declined. The one out offer out for Von Miller. He's 33 years old. I still think he can absolutely do it. He uh, dipped off a little bit last year in his production, but if we have Burns on the other side, there's a good possibility that he can step up and he won't be, you know, seeing double teams that he would have saw in Denver. Uh, so maybe this is the move. Do we go 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 after Von Miller here? Just maybe a two-year deal. I mean, he's making that's a lot of money, but only a two-year deal. But I don't know, yeah, 12.5 million dollar hits. 33 years old. Pass rushers can hang around for a long time. Look at Terrell Suggs. Those guys can hang around and still be productive. So we're going to offer Von Miller a contract here. We're over the Redskins. Even Denver didn't want to bring him back. So we'll see if Von Miller is going to be joining this team. And it's going to be Thomas joining. Turner is going to reject. Thomas is going to be back. And Von Miller is here. So welcome Von Miller. Kind of ironic, right? He uh, took down this Panthers team in the Super Bowl, won himself a Super Bowl MVP, and now welcome to Carolina and try to win yourself another Super Bowl. So put him on the opposite side of Brian Burns, and I think we got ourselves a big-time pass rushing doer that might wreak havoc here in this NFC South and hopefully uh, help us defend this Super Bowl championship. You can see the drop-off, but like I said, with Brian Burns there to help him out, uh, that can uh, production, I think, can go right up. And obviously now with Trey Turner gone, we're going to have to look at somewhere else. Taking a look around the rest of the free agency here. Not really seeing anything I'm very intrigued with. And I'm thinking maybe we just look towards the draft or probably move Vallejo in. Obviously Vallejo now a star development. I mean, the development's not going to give you everything. It's all about ratings. But if we can kind of move him into that guard spot and then kind of, you know, every week work on that XP, that's a possibility because right now I'm not seeing a whole lot. Kyle Long is just sitting there, but I, I'm not... Uh, I'm fine maybe playing a younger guy to get going there. And Dominic and Sue, I think we're going to offer a contract here, just a one-year deal. I mean, he's really dropped off, obviously, with the uh, regression here at 35 years old. But one-year deal, just to fill it out, get some time, I think we'll offer him a contract. Tim Williams, another guy, will offer another kind of pass rush specialist. Obviously, he's been struggling a little bit in his NFL career and his real NFL career. Um, Started out with the Ravens, got released, and then picked up by the Packers, and then it just got released as well. But we'll give him an opportunity here. Uh, can't have enough pass rushers, and then Sue and Williams will accept. So they accept the, the uh, contract offers. And now, uh, looking at the rest of the league signings, so Leighton Van Esch, he will go to Miami. Roquan Smith is going to go to New England. Damon Harrison is going to go to uh, Denver. Michelle to the Bengals. Trey Turner ended up signing with the Vikings. Robert Woods to the Eagles, Gallup with the Eagles. So they're going to try to get something going with their pass game. As you can see, Andrews uh, goes to the Giants as well, pouncing to the Steelers. So not really seeing any Saints, Falcons, or Bucks signings here. Usually the Buccaneers are usually uh, big time in free agency, but nothing really here. Ogie Joby goes to the Cardinals. A lot of Patriots, a lot of Broncos, a lot of Dolphins. Yeah, Will Disley go to the Patriots. The Patriots stepping up in there.
Sharadi just saw, man, he looked like an, a monster. And I'm thinking we're going to have to try to trade up and get him. As Gilbert, the outside linebacker from Cincinnati, is going to go to Pittsburgh. Because he's going to be gone soon. And looking after, once you get past those first few corners that were just taken, it really drops off. So we're going to try to trade up. we got two first-rounders this year. We're going to try to get a fourth next year. So we can send that to Green Bay. And I think... As we kind of continue to sit back here. So he looks good. I mean, he looks good. I think maybe we possibly try to make a trade. Let's see if guards start to go or maybe offensive linemen start to go. So Grayson Dallas is going to he's going to go to Dallas free safety there. Esparza is going to go to Tampa Bay, the wide receiver. Goes end is Maxi. Left tackle, Kadeem Smith goes to the Chargers. That's still rolling on here. Savage wide receiver going to go to Minnesota. 
And then Richards, uh, halfback, goes to Tennessee. Mays, linebacker, goes to Atlanta. There's the guard. So Wayne Sharpton goes to Kansas City. And uh, yeah, usually when you see someone in position goes, you got to be careful. So I think we're going to try to make a deal here with Chicago. We're going to give up a third, third next year, and a fifth round pick. And actually, two thirds from this year. So we have four first four third round picks and I think we're going to take Dale Pram in. he looks fantastic and he's a 69 overall just a normal development so there you go looked like he was a, a really outstanding um, man the grades were great in the in the, uh, the combine B pluses you know not too bad he's okay but nothing really crazy so maybe we reach there with that pick we still have two third round picks so I'm not really concerned as now we're going to go to the rest of our picks here. And then Colt Burbank, as we'll continue to try to beef up our offensive line, we'll pick him here. 67 overall, only a normal development. So, obviously the grades on these guys, it's based on the class. It's not like based on like top overalls or, you know, 99 overall. It's based on the class. So it looks like this class of offensive linemen is a little bit disappointing. Um, we go to our next pick here in the third round, taking a look at what we got. Now, these guys later on, Adrian Cates and Jalen Sapp, they're undrafted talent, but take a look at them. Wow. Late second round, I mean, talent, but undrafted project, projected. So, we're, we definitely, one of those guys we're definitely going to pick up for sure. Maybe we get a steal. But I think we're going to go with Jordan Baldwin here. Beef up the defensive line uh, depth here. 70 overall, good pick, normal development, not too bad there. 89 strength, 78 block shedding. Have to work on his pass rushing ability, but at least he can get to uh, get some be as a run stopper there. Not too bad, 75 tackle, not too bad for a late third round pick. As you can see, we got two fourth, we got a fourth, fifth, and six left. This is what's left on our draft board, so not really a whole lot there. So I'm thinking possibly let's trade away this pick, let's get some draft capital for next year, uh, since I don't really see anybody I really want. So Houston's offers fourth rounder for next year. Um, anybody else really they're all for this year I don't want any more picks this year so let's go to the fourth round for next year we'll swap with the Texans we'll get a pick for next year as we're in our fifth round pick I'm keep looking at Jalen Sapp just the talent alone I don't want to pass it up 6-4-2-0-2 we're in a 4-5-1 safety he looks like an absolute beast let's take Jalen Sapp and he's a 68 overall but hidden development we will take that I mean the size the ability of this guy 87 speed, 87 acceleration, 73 tackle. Not too bad for a guy that was projected uh, undrafted. He's a, you know, hidden talent. So we'll really have to see what he can turn out to be. Could be a story going forward. Jalen Sapp is the pick there. And our last pick, we're going to look at Donovan Poindexter. Maybe just looking for depth and middle linebacker. Really not a whole lot there. He's only a 58 overall. I don't even expect him to make the team. Um, yeah. Doesn't really see anything else that I really want. Don't expect him to make the team, but that's our last pick. So that's your draft. So Dontrell Sherrod, I mean, we trade up and get him, and I think he's the best corner in this draft. He looks fantastic. Hidden development, so we'll have to see what he turns out to be. Jalen Sapp could be something else. The lineman, really a disappointment. So, But really, all in all, not too bad of a draft, as we'll take a look as the, at the top players. Um, Von Carey was your number one overall pick, 77 overall. He's a hidden developer there for Washington. Uh, decent power moves. Uh, not bad speed. 94 strength, though. Wow, wow. 94 strength. Detroit, Solomon Kraft was your pick number two. Let's go down the list here. Warren Gilbert. You can see no quarterbacks either. There wasn't, there, there's no quarterbacks at all, which is kind of crazy to think. Um, usually there's somebody, you know, in the draft, that at least one or two good quarterbacks. There's absolutely nothing here going through the list here and going through the rest of this first round and then we'll obviously go I think we'll go over take a look at the teams in the division there's McFarland so that was a guy I was looking at he's a hidden development 77 overall
see anybody else around here that had at least maybe like 270 overalls drafted. Uh, let's see, man. Keith Knight. Good pick there in the fourth round for uh, Arizona. I mean, he's only an Oral development. 71 overall. Not too bad to get it in the fourth round. 89 speed, 74 zone coverage. That's a pretty good pick there. Anybody else that's got 270? Yeah, the Colts. So, uh, Byron Crockett, cornerback. Hidden development, 75 overall, more of a man-to-man -man corner. Take a look at his rating, 76 overall and coverage, 91 speed, 86 agility. Pretty good pick there. And then they take Titus Buck in the next round, 77 overall, hidden development, 92 speed, 90 agility. Oh, man, good, good picks there for the Indianapolis Colts, finding some gems there. And, and I mean, 60, 67 overall, not too bad for the third round. So they had a pretty good draft pick. I give them, give uh, Indianapolis a good job there in the drafting. Uh, the Dolphins, Carlos Tucker, hidden development, cornerback. So the corners were really uh, good this year. 93 speed, 75 man, 70 zone, 73 play rec. Not too bad there. Antoine Irwin, only a uh, normal development, but 70 overall. With the Dolphins, with the free agent signings they brought up as well. So possibly maybe the Dolphins a team to actually look at. Uh, maybe possibly can do some damage there in that AFC East division. Anybody, other teams around the league that have multiple at least 70 overall picks here in this draft. Keep going around. And uh, maybe the Lions there had one. But that's uh, pretty much about it. So that's going to pretty much wrap up this offseason. You can take a look at the schedule here going forward. So we start out with New Orleans, a team that beat us last year as we're heading to the playoffs. Pittsburgh. Arizona, go to Baltimore, Atlanta, Los Angeles, back to uh, New Orleans, play the Browns, uh, Super Bowl rematch there, Bengals, at Seahawks, at Bears, at Falcons, man, this is, sometimes every year look at the schedule, like, this could be a tough one, this one looks like a definitely tough schedule for sure, uh, three, there's three straight road games there near the late of the season, it's going to be interesting to see. So an interesting offseason, we had Von Miller, we got a really good draft pick in uh, Dontrell Sherrod, so... I think we just continue along with the season. Obviously, we didn't address the quarterback. Justin Fields is the starter. There's no doubt about it. Drew Locke, he's the backup for now, but we'll see what we do coming into the preseason. And we'll, that might be a change, but we'll see then. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. If you please leave a like, I'd appreciate it as well. And if you have not subscribed, do that as well. I will see you in the next one. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.